If you're watching this, Ma, forgive me. This law is basically like when I was seven years old and my daddy told me, if you got $10 and your mama asks you how much money you got, you tell her you only got $1. Like we always do about this time. What's going on, folks? It's your boy, Coach, back with another video. And today, we're going to continue the 48 laws of rap. And on this video, we're going to jump into law 21, which is play a sucker to catch a sucker. Always seem dumber than your mark. Let's get into it. You should always appear dumber than others. Make other people feel smarter than you and they will never see what ulterior motives you have underneath the surface. Now at its basis, this rule is play the pig to catch the tiger, okay? The tiger sees a pig and the tiger thinks that he has an easy target. But the tiger doesn't know the hunter is one step ahead of him. The hunter is posed as the pig. So as the tiger gets close, the hunter turns around and pop. The tiger never would have suspected it. We find the idea that people are better than us, are smarter than us, look better than us, have more money you know, than us, intolerable. So we'll try to make up things in our mind to justify why they have it, to discredit them, okay? Now, let's reverse that. Put ourselves in those shoes. If we were the person that was looked at as feeling like we better than everybody and we smarter than everybody and we better looking, then we would breed resentment in everybody around us, okay? So think about this in your intelligence. If you can downplay your intelligence, if you can downplay your smarts, other people won't see you as a threat. If you this dumb, unsophisticated, bummy motherfucker, they'll never see you as the person trying to take their spot. They'll never see you as the person trying to get one up over them because they only see the surface. They don't see the underneath, okay? And so three great artists that I want to talk about that have done this to great effect is Frank Ocean, Gucci Mane, and Birdman, okay? Birdman groomed Lil Wayne since he was a kid. Birdman called Lil Wayne his son and had Lil Wayne calling him his daddy. And the Birdman, which is baby, my father. There's a reason why they say do not mix business with family. Now we all know Wayne and Birdman's legal troubles. And Birdman, had he not got close to Lil Wayne so early, had he not gotten in Lil Wayne's ear, had he not fooled Lil Wayne into thinking that he was a father figure that would never do him wrong, Lil Wayne would have not given up so much trust to him, would have not let him fuck him over all of those years. So in this case, Birdman played the father to catch a sucker. That man figured out how to finesse the record industry, and people don't talk about that. That It took that man two years to do that shit. And now, if you don't know, Frank Ocean pulled off one of the biggest finesses in music history. And to basically summarize it, he wanted to get off of Def Jam Records, but he was due one more album, okay? Now, Frank Ocean being the great artist that he is, he didn't want to give this masterpiece album that he was holding to Def Jam. Why? Because Def Jam was going to hold the royalties, they was going to hold the ownership of it, and, you know, he didn't want to do that. That was the whole reason why he wanted to get out. So what he did was he played a sucker. He said, okay, fine. I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and release the album. Give me the money for an advance and, and I'll make the album. I'll make you an album. And so what did he do? He took that money from the advance. He created this monumental album called Blonde. And then he created a fluke album, kind of a fake album. And he gave that to Def Jam and passed that off as the album that he was going to release. Def Jam puts out the Fluke album, and then Frank Ocean turns around and drops the Masterpiece album that he wants to. But because he already gave Def Jam that final album, he had fulfilled his contract. And now this Masterpiece album, that mind you, he took $2 million from Def Jam to make, now he owns the rights to it. Now he can take this album and go sell it to Apple. Frank Ocean played the dumb artist to catch a sucker, all right? Who else was on the list? Um, Gooch. Yeah, Gucci was on the six, Rick Ross. Gucci who? Gucci man? Mm -hmm. Was on the list? Eminem went on the list? 
Shout out my nigga Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my nigga Gucci. Oh shit. Oh shit. Back in the day, Gucci Mane was looked at as a dummy, a retard, a, a short bus shawty. You know, and all of this stuff. And nobody would really think of Gucci as the smart businessman that he really is. But number one, Gucci is smart because he made sure that every Atlanta artist that came up, he attached himself to them. Okay? And so in the case of Young Thug, when Gucci went on his on his crazy historical Twitter rant where he basically dissed everybody, cursed everybody out got everybody on the wrong side, offended everybody. Before going to jail, everybody had underestimated Gucci. Everybody thought Gucci was this fucking idiot. And so I'm pretty sure the label execs at Atlantic and 300 underestimated Gucci too. They thought Gucci was a sucker. They thought Gucci was dumb. So when Gucci went to jail, Young Thug assumingly thought he was a free agent. So what did Young Thug do? Young Thug went to go sign with Atlantic. But what they didn't know is Gucci had paperwork on Young Thug this whole time. So when it was time to cut that check for Young Thug, they had to cut a check for Gucci Mane too. But had 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 Gucci Mane played up the smart the smart businessman, or had he not been in jail or not crashed himself, who knows which way it would have took. But either way, Gucci being smart in the beginning. And probably Thug thinking, oh, man, this Goo Wop, he ain't going to mess me up. He goes, nah, nah. Gucci played the retard to catch a sucker, okay? I hope this video was of value to you guys. I'll holler at you on the next one. Peace. I was kind of trying to figure out my little swag, bro. You know, the first thing I did was I, I went and got a Pinterest, right? And, and on that Pinterest, I made myself like a mood board. Like I went and like grabbed like all of the like hard pictures from the old rap magazines that I liked, all of the like the the, the, the fashion pictures I liked, the colors I liked, and I made this board and like I would look at it and it would like motivate different stuff if I wanted to like have an idea for a video, like I get, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd have like 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 pictures from from old videos. Like like my whole thing was I wanted this 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 whole grimy shit. So I had a lot of like like '90s New York shit. You know what I'm saying? Mixed in with like 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 down south shit because you know I'm from down south. You know what I'm saying? The cars and the money and the, the, the strip clubs and shit. So like it, it it motivated me. And so I always I always kept things like that. And especially. When 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 I didn't really really have everything put together, that was that was that was that was key for me early. It definitely helped with fucking photographs. Like motherfuckers get so awkward when they go take photographs because they don't know what the fuck to do. Man, I say, bro, just go look at old rap fucking magazine pictures. You know what I'm saying? And where can you look at? Just just you know Google it. Go go dig deep. But go look at like the scenes they took, like the poses they took, like all that, like, like that's why I kept that Pinterest board, you know what I'm saying?